you can see the route goes uh, to uh, Poland, Gdansk here, and then uh, we fly across Poland. Uh, Bodla, I uh, believe, is the uh, waypoint between Poland and Germany, and then we continue across uh, Germany. Uh, and here is uh, Belgium, and then uh, down south, actually, through Belgium, Luxembourg, and then into to Paris, which, which we have here. So, actually, we have a screen here that gives us a, a long, long range. You can you can see your whole flight. And if that's not possible, then we can even uh, we can even change the, the format of the map, and we can actually move move the routing around. So I can I can look very detailed into the routes here, all the way to. Uh, to Paris. So this screen is uh, what we're actually using for our FMS uh, and as you can see it's not like in older airplanes. Uh, there is no uh, hardware buttons. It's all graphical and that's usually how you interface with this aircraft. It's uh, We have uh, what we call a cursor control device. Uh, so it's, it's a scroll it's a cursor that we control here with a with a button and then we have select keys here on this on the side yeah and uh, actually the fms is uh, i think quite intuitive uh, we have uh, tabs and we have tiles so the our fly planning basically would would start uh, with a database and then it would move we have its position everything that has to do with position IRSs, satellites, GNNS, and uh, and then the conventional. And this aircraft actually has uh, SBAS, so it's a satellite-based augmentation system. It also allows us very precise approach navigation, so we can uh, we can fly LPV approaches out of the box with this aircraft. And in fact, as long as the aircraft is within uh, coverage of uh, of uh, EGNOS or SPAS, uh, the FMS will disregard IRSs to update its position. It will only use GNNS. So here we have the flight planning tile. Uh, this is where we uh, initialize. And uh, because we have ACARS, uh, we are actually getting the flight plan uplink to the aircraft. So it reduces the, uh, the workload for the pilot during the, the pre-flight uh, portion of it uh, quite a lot. Uh, so we just send a flight plan request to our operations control and then uh, it gets sent up to the aircraft and, and the flight plan gets populated in the FMS. And the same thing uh, with winds. So we just request winds and it gets sent up to the aircraft. Performance, it's everything logically. So starting from the takeoff, departure, through climb, and now we're in cruise here, we can see uh, uh, what speed strategy we currently are following, uh, the cruise altitude, the optimum altitude and the maximum altitude for the current uh, weight of the aircraft. Then the yeah, descent will be for later and arrival. And then the pilots so the pilot flying, he usually has the performance on his side, so we would now have cruise. And the route uh, is on the pilot monitoring side, so where we can see the waypoints and everything. All screens can basically be reconfigurable. We can put a map down here if you want, or we can, and we can put FMS up on this screen. Uh, the ECAS. We could put it on the one of the right screens, and uh, you can actually also do uh, with just a map. You can do graphical flight planning, so you can click on any point uh, and uh, and modify your your flight plan basically. So now my uh, co-pilot he was doing this in the FMS, but another way to do that would be to go here on the map, mark the waypoints. Bolt law and then direct and execute. So there's multiple ways of uh, of how they interfacing with with avionics in this aircraft. Uh, another example is when we tune frequencies. So we could do it the old way of 
of selecting here and tuning uh, frequency and then switching it over or we could use a software page basically set the frequency there with just the numbers here on the MKP and then change the frequency very simple aircraft has CPDLC it's a requirement it's a forward fit requirement and we are using that but uh, it's not active in Poland yet, Polish airspace. So we'll log in later. A cars, I said we have. So this is what we use uh, to communicate with uh, our operation center. Uh, so reporting, uh, we report to them, they report to us. Uh, we uh, request uh, weather reports, uh, we request air traffic control clearances. We get our uh, load sheets. Uh, Etc. Uh, via via cars. It's a nice tool, but unfortunately, we don't talk to our operations control anymore on radio. So it, maybe it gets a bit lonely once in a while. <laughs> then we have a one display that's basically dedicated to uh, to our primary flight instruments. So you have the uh, attitude directory indicator. You have speeds. You have alt altitude. Here you have the flight mode enunciations, so the the way that the flight director is working, the status of the autopilot, uh, we have a compass rows at the bottom, uh, there is information about the active waypoint. And here we have one nice thing, is that is the, the flight number, because uh, on the older types that you fly, where you don't have the flight number in front of your face, you sometimes have to get your flight plan and refer because you don't remember what it is anymore. The time, the date, and the temperature. You would also get uh, any kind of messages, uh, FMS messages and stuff here on, on the side of the screen. So ECAS, uh, the engine instruments. So here we have the primary, the, the thrust setting values up here, the engine temperatures, uh, and then it's more uh, secondary instruments, uh, the N2, so the how fast the core is spinning, the fuel flow. You can just see now that we have 800 kilos per engine per hour. So that's 1.6 tons cruise. That's, that's quite good for this type of airplanes. But it's brand new, so uh, oil temperature, oil pressure. Uh, we can see more in s more information if you want to. Here we have the fuel, and that's the total fuel load. And here we have the wing tanks, and then in the, the center tank. That's uh, indication regarding uh, the cabin altitude and uh, oxygen for the crew. And we have the temperatures here in the, in the in the airplane. So we have one zone for the flight deck. We like to keep it cool. The passengers, they usually like to keep it warmer, so it's 29, 28 degrees now in the forward and aft cabin. 